kamay at wikain ang mga sumusunod. Ako, ako, si Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. Si Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos Jr. ay matayintim na nanunumpa. Ay tayintim na nanunumpa. Natutuparin ko ng buong katapatan at sigasi. Na po, natutuparin ko ng buong katapatan at sigasi. Ang aking mga tungkulin. Ang aking mga tungkulin. Bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Bilang Pangulo ng Pilipinas. Pangalagaan. Pangalagaan. At ipagtatanggol. At ipagtatanggol. Ang kanyang konstitusyon. Ang kanyang konstitusyon. Ipatutupad ang mga batas nito. Ipapatupad ang mga batas nito. Magiging makatarungan sa bawat tao. Magiging makatarungan sa bawat tao. At itatalaga ang aking sarili. At itatalaga ang aking sarili. Sa paglilingkod sa bansa. Sa paglilingkod sa bansa. Kasi nawa ako ng Diyos. Kasi nawa ako ng Diyos. Congratulations, Mr. President.
His uh, Excellency David Hurley, Governor General of Australia and First Lady Linda Hurley, Their Excellency Special Envoys and Heads of Delegations, His Excellency Most Reverend Charles John Brown and the esteemed members of the Diplomatic Corps, Vice President Sara Duterte, President Fidel Ramos, President Joseph Ejercito Estrada, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, huh? Senate President Vicente Soto III, and the Honorable Members of the Philippine Senate, House Speaker Lord Alan J. Velasco, and the Honorable Members of the House of Representatives, Chief Justice Alexander Gesmundo and the Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court. Of course, First Lady Lisa Araneta and my children, Alexander, Sandro, Simon, and Vincent. I cannot proceed without a special greeting, of course, to the former First Lady Imelda Gonzalez Marcos. Other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, ang aking minamahal ng mga kababayan, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. This is a historic moment for us all. I feel it deep within me. You, the people, have spoken, and it is resounding. When my call for unity started to resonate with you, it did so because it echoed your yearnings, mirrored your sentiments, and expressed your hopes for family, for country, and for a better future. That is why it reverberated and amplified as it did to deliver the biggest electoral mandate in the history of Philippine democracy. By your book, you rejected the politics of division. I offended none of my rivals in this campaign. I listened instead to what they were saying. And I saw little incompatibility with my own ideas about jobs, fair wages, personal safety, and national strength, and ending wants in a land of plenty. I believe that if we but focus on the work at hand and the work that will come to hand, we will go very far under my watch. You believe that too. At pinakinggan ko ang tinig ninyo na ang sinisigaw ay pagkakaisa, pagkakaisa, pagkakaisa. We will go farther together than against each other, pushing forward, not pulling each other back, out of fear, out of a misplaced sense of weakness. But we are the furthest from me. The Filipino diaspora flourishes even in the most inhospitable climes, where they are valued for their quality. The changes we seek will benefit all and will shortchange no one. I was not the instrument of change. You were that. You made it happen. I am now. You picked me to be your servant, to enable changes to benefit all. I fully understand the gravity of the responsibility that you put on my shoulders. I do not take it lightly, but I am ready for the task. I will need your help. I want to rely on it, but rest assured I do not predicate success on the wide cooperation that's needed. I will get it done. I once knew a man who saw what little had been achieved since independence, 
in a land of people with the greatest potential for achievement. And yet, they were poor. But he got it done. Sometimes with the needed support, sometimes without. So will it be with his son. You will get no excuses from me. I am here not to talk about the past. I am here to tell you about our future. A future of sufficiency, even plenty of readily available ways and means to get done what needs doing by you, by me. We do not look back, but ahead. Up the road that we must take to a place better than the one we lost in the pandemic. Gains made and lost, opportunities missed, well-laid plans superseded by the pandemic. Indeed, ours was the fastest growing economy in ASEAN by ways now outdated. We shall, begin, we shall be again by radical change in the way the world must now work to recover what we have lost in that fire and move on from there. We, we face prospects of the spread of the war abroad of which we are totally blameless. We seek friendship with all. But our countries like ours will bear the brunt of it. And if the great powers draw the wrong lessons from the ongoing tragedy in Ukraine, the same dark prospect of conflict will spread to our part of the world. Yet, there is more out there. Like going forward by new ways of doing the, that the pandemic forces to adopt a stronger resilience, quicker adaptability. They are our best prevention. They are our best protection. Quiet reflection in a rough and tumble campaign of a breadth and intensity never experienced reveals some of them, such as a willingness to listen despite the noise, the hesitation to quarrel over differences, and to never, ever give up hope of reconciliation. These gave me the peace to ponder deeper. There are hints of a road not taken that could get us out of here quicker to something better, something less when, fragile. When we eat, now you there is also what you, what you, the people, did to COVID. Yes. But this time, empowered by new techniques and more resources. You got by getting some of what you needed with a massive government help. And for this, I thank my predecessor for the courage of his hard decisions. But there is a way to put more means and choices in your hands. I trust the Philippines. Imagine how much more you'd achieve if government backstops instead of dictating your decisions. Always there to pick you up when you fall. Giving what you need to get past a problem. Imagine if it invested in your self-empowerment to bring it closer to taking on whatever challenges come. Imagine a country that, in almost every sense, is you. Now imagine what you and government can achieve together. We did it in the pandemic. We will do it again. But again, I will not predicate my promise to you on your cooperation. You have your own lives to live, your work to do, and there too I will help. Government will get as much done alone without requiring more from you. That is what government and public officials are for. No excuses, just deliver. It was like that once upon a time. I did not talk much in this campaign. I did not bother to think of rebutting my rivals. Instead, I searched for promising approaches better than the usual solutions. I listened to you. I did not lecture you who has the biggest stake in our success. 
and the forthcoming state of the nation will tell you exactly how we shall get this done. In this first chapter of our history, I extend my hand to all Filipinos. Come, let us put our shoulders to the wheel and give that wheel a faster turn to repair and to rebuild and to address challenges in new ways to provide what all Filipinos need to be all that we can. We are here to repair a house divided, to make it whole, and to stand strong again in the Bayanihan way expressive of our nature as Filipinos. May we now request on stage Chief Justice Alexander G. Kismuki and Senate President Vicente Sotola III to join the first family.